Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today, we're going to be going over absolutely everything coming for New Year's 2021 uh, for Fake Grand Order North American side. It's going to be a lot to cover over. Um, some stuff I'm not going to go super in-depth because I'm going to plan them for a future video, but I should get the basic gist of everything. Um, so that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, uh, remember to leave a like, comment, tell me how you're feeling, um, and subscribe to me if you want some more uh, stuff from me. So let's begin. Before I start, we should mention, because it's very important, Benny's event is the one that's coming for New Year's 2021. And her event requires you to beat Lost Belt 3, which is the most recent one uh, in China. Um, so to tell you how crazy that is, I still haven't beaten Lost Belt Sin yet, so I have to get my uh, butt in gear and get this done uh, if I want to participate in the event. So first things first, I just wanted to mention that because a lot of people maybe don't know. And if you thought like you weren't able to make it for Lucha last year, for last year, um, the Lucha event that was this um, Christmas event, this one is much harder to reach. But thankfully there is a half-off stamina campaign going on, so hopefully you'll be able to reach it in time. But let's continue forward. So here's some campaign info. First things first, log into Fake Grand Order uh, during the following period to receive 30 Saint Quartz. It starts on the 1st, 20, 2021. And it goes to the third. It goes to at least the third uh, day roll. It looks like thirty sync quartz. Pretty simple. Do it. <laughs> thirty sync quartz is one multi. Um, and given how often we get those in fate, I would. It's good. It's a good deal. Thirty. Thirty is not uh, something you could ignore. Um, the first three day login bonus. Uh, Twenty one golden fruits. Twenty one golden foe three. Not golden foe three star foe, and twenty one HP one perfectly fine. That's enough for, I think, one unit and, and, and a spare extra, I guess. Um, the New Year's uh, limited CE and 20,210,000 QP, I think is how much that is for two... We're getting a lot of reactions on Facebook, on Twitter, apparently. This hasn't started yet, so we'll wait for that to happen. A limited time returning master's login bonus. Masters who have been away from the game for a while can take advantage of the returning master's login bonus for a limited time. Log in during this period to receive 30 sync quartz. So if you've been gone for the game for a while, um, starting on the 1st, you can get this back and it goes until the 10th. So. so that's the basic stuff of it right here. Let's go into, I think... It's more here? No, it's right here. So here's the actual event for it. Sparrows in daily report. Uh, records of Emma Tay's prosperity. Benny Men. Benny Emma? Emma? Uh, Benny. I always called her Benny Maru, I think. But I don't think that's actually what her name is. I called her Benny. Uh, she's the burb. Everyone's favorite burb. Um, yeah, this is going to be the event for it. It's going to be a weird event because I don't... Again, I didn't play JP when her event came out. I did summon for her, but I didn't actually play the event. Um, but it looks like you're going to be gathering stuff here. Um, you can read all about it right here. Oops. Um, oops. Uh, challenge event quest to gather event items. Exchange a lumber to execute renovation quest. You can collect exchange for various rewards right here. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, remodel the MT through renovation quests and clear the renovation quest to increase guest satisfaction. Collect tribute points based on guest satisfaction each day starting at 10 a.m. PST. Claim tribute point rewards at certain tribute point levels, plus unlock main quests. Um, if I remember right, um, in JP it was actually very hard to do this. I think you had to like set your clock to JP time in order to do this, so it should be easier for us over here. Maybe that's one of the reasons why I didn't bother with this event in Japan, because I didn't want to do that. Um, yeah, and complete the story and restore the Emetai to prosperity. Um, collect tribute points each day, beginning on the fir yeah, first... 10 PST. Once you clear main quest section 3 of the event, tribute points equal to your guest satisfaction level will be awarded for the first time you open the event map each day, from 10 a.m. PST to 9.59 a.m. PST the next day. This event includes missions requiring you to accumulate certain number of tribute points, clear a mission to receive rewards, and unlock the next mission. Certain missions will also unlock new sections of the event main quest. Tap the event rewards button displayed at the bottom right corner of the terminal access tribute point screen and check mission and rewards. 
yeah, that's basically just saying right there. Tribute points based on guest satisfaction can be collected each day at 10 a.m. PST. Claim mission rewards as your tribute reach certain levels. Uh, main quest section 7, get 3,500 tribute points, 90k tribute points, and 500,000 tribute points. Alright. Collecting lumber to renovate the Emite. Renovation quest can be executed by expanding event items, KK Kiyaki Lumber. Cypress Lumber and Cedar Lumber. If you complete these quests for renovation, the MHSA proceeds. Guest satisfaction will increase. Guest satisfaction is reflected the amount of tribute points we received, so completing more renovations will allow you to claim more tribute points. Plus, renovations, renovating certain facilities will unlock new sections of the main quest, continue renovation, and as you progress the story. Hints and Strategies Part 1. Uh, bond points. Wow, this gives... One points increase? What? Oh, I think this is just talking about in general. Um, event bonuses. So, in this event, every servant will receive bonus to the amount of kick as lumber, cypress lumber, and cider lumber per drop. Which item is granted as the bonus will vary on the servants uh, by servant by servant. Choose servants for your party based on the event bonus they receive. Um... Please be aware that item drop rates is, are, is not 100%. Special bonus servants. Certain servants who play a major role will receive bonus for all three items. Kiyaki Lumber, Cypress Lumber, and Cedar Lumber, plus a bonus to bond points gained when clearing event quests. The bonus amount will vary on each servants. Mash Cure Light bond point gain effect is increased. The increased bond gain for all allies, including sub-members, by 5%. This bonus will not go into effect when used as support. So as you can see here, we have Benny Emma, who is a Saber. Um, Dear Mood, Archer of Inferno, Tomoe Goizen, <laughs> nice of them to reveal her name, uh, Fion, Tamamo, Tamamo Cat, Kiyohime, and Mash here is at the bottom giving people bond point bonuses. Um, and you can see here, Saber Lancer Ruler gives up to Keiaki Lumber, Cypress Lumber is Archer Caster, Avenger, Moon Cancer, Foreigner, and Cedar Lumber is Rider, Assassin, Berserker, Alter Ego. Okay. The event bonus uh, craft essence, the one you get for the event itself, gives you the lumber. And then the gotcha ones give you... Yes, that's basic stuff. We all know what that happens there. Um, event limited craft essence is this one right here. Increase quick arts card effectiveness by 6%, art card effectiveness by 6%, and buster card effectiveness by 6%. Begin battle with MP charge at 30% for yourself. Uh, it's okay. I guess if you if you're starting out and you if you're starting out, there's no way for you to get to this event, so it doesn't matter <laughs> how good it is for you. Um, there's better ones out there, I feel. Um, event limited. Uh, these are the command codes. Um, what is this name? Good wife, wise fox. Increase HP recovery amount by fifty percent when time two turns for yourself when attacking with the engraved card. And the Mirror of Eight Leaves, apply Immobilization Immune one time two turns to yourself when attacking with the engraved card. Um, rank up quest added for the four event related servants. We got Tamamo, she was already really solid. She's now more solid. Um, yeah, doesn't change the fact that most people are just gonna be waiting for uh, Castoria, but regardless, still good. Uh, we got Fion. No one cares about Fion, but he is actually very good, especially... So, here's the thing about Fion, and nobody wants to admit it anymore, is that we memed so hard that Fion was bad, that now that Castoria exists, he's the best, I think. He is basically the Parvati for Lancers in Castoria, but nobody wants to admit it because no one wants to admit using Fion. Um, that Fion is good after making fun of him for so long, but yeah, Fion is good. There's no denying, once you get all his rank up quests, he his MP gain is just insane. <laughs> and his MP everything, so he's a solid unit to invest in, but I would, you know, the only drawback is that you're using, you're using Theon. Tamamo Cat uh, applies invincibility to herself for one turn, which is very good because she's a berserker and she dies very easily. Kiyohime gets more fire dragon, increases defense. For three turns for yourself, strength and inflict spreading fire, increase burn damage. It's okay. So now let's actually look at Benny. I don't think they have info from Benny, but I know where to find it. One moment. Okay. Uh, here's Benny Emma. Uh, she is a single target saber with arts. And her deck here is one quick, two arts, um, two buster. 
Um, her skill one is Eye of the Mind False. Grants self evasion for one turn, increases crit damage for three turns. 20% uh, at the start, 40% by the end. Her second skill is Star Basket Big. Reduces all enemies' defense for three turns, reduces their critical attack chance for three turns. Seals their NP for one turn, but then they also get healed a thousand. Um, at level one, it's defense uh, ten percent, crit chance twenty percent. At the end, it's twenty to thirty percent. Cooldown to six. Star basket small increases party attack for three turns. Increases party's um, buff removal resistance for one turn. Charges party's NP gauge. Recovers party HP by a thousand, but then also increases the enemy's in, uh, recovery by a thousand. That's a demerit. Um, attack percentage up is 10%, buff removal resistance is 50%, and NP is 10% at uh, skill level 1. And by level 10, it is 20%, 100%, and 20%. Uh, perfectly fine. Um, she has a buttload of passive skills. She has magic, magic resistance A, increases on debuff resistance by 20%. Independent action A, increases on critical damage but uh, done by 10%. Uh, presence Concealment A increases on critical star generation by 10%. In Creation B increases on art performance by 10%. For Drilliquism EX grants self skill D skill seal debuff immunity. And her Noble Phantasm is Judgment of the Ten Rulers of Afterlife, Journey of the Wicker Basket. It is a single target anti unit. Um, deals at MP level 1, it is 900% damage up, and at overcharge, she deals 40% more damage to chaotic um, enemies and evil and evil characters, 40%, and if they are both, you're dealing 80% more damage. Oh, man. So, how good is Benny? So here's the thing, a lot of people talk crap on Benny, which I feel is a lot of, it's very unwarranted. She's very good, but she's also kind of niche. Um, but when you're specifically fighting people of that niche, she's amazing. Um, over on my account in JP, that is um, a super starter level um, account, she was able to get me through um, all the long spells pretty easily as my only single. I think I literally beat Solomon with Benny Enma and um, um, Ryder Da Vinci and Castoria. Those were the three I needed for the most part, and they completely uh, stole the show for me. So, is she skippable in a lot of ways? Yes, um, but in a lot of ways, she's such a good bird. Look at her. I don't think you'll be sad. Just know that going in, if you're someone who's like only summons for units to be like top tier ever perfect, she's very good against very specific enemies, and then everything else she's kind of okay to uh, good at. Um, her support is pretty good, but at the same time, it seems like it'd be the only kind of support you would use in challenge quests or high level boss fights, not daily grinding and stuff like that. If her NP charger was a little bit more than just 20%, like let's say it was. Um, <laughs> if she gave 50% to the whole team, if she gave around 30%, I think that would end up being... Actually, I don't know. 20% is pretty good. I don't know. Um, I definitely do like her a whole bunch, and I will be summoning for her, but, you know, it's something to remember. And I forgot, because he comes later, but a week later, there is another uh, character that comes to the game. It is... Where is he? He's down here somewhere. Uh, here he is. It is Old Man Lee, Lee Shuen. So let's go over him while we got him. Active skill, Chinese martial arts. I can't pronounce that. A++++. Ignores invincibility for one turn. Increases on crit damage for one turn. Crit damage is 50% at level 1, and at level 10 it is 100%. Um, second skill is Spear Boundary Zenith, A-, minus. grants self-evasion for one turn, increases own critical star absorption for one turn, and gains crit stars. Um... The absorption is 300% at level 1, and he gets 5 stars at level 1. He gets 15 stars at level 10, and 500% absorption at the final level. And his third skill is Intersection of Ying and Yang B. Increases on attack for one turn, further increases on attack for three turns, grants self debuff immunity for one turn. Um, and the attack increase is 20% and 10%. Um, the three turn one is 10% and the single turn is 20% and at level 10 is 30% and 20%. Okay. And his passive skill is veteran, increases his own arts performance by 8%, increases his own critical star generation rate by 8%. And similar to Benny, he is an anti-unit unit. 
Later on, he does get a rank up, but for now, this is what he'll have in North America. He deals damage to one enemy, uh, and he has a 100% chance to instant kill them. Um, at level NP level 1, and it's 900% damage, and its overcharge is... Um, lowers defense by 20%. So... That's Old Man Lee, and Old Man Lee is an assassin with arts. Um, let's actually just look how much better he gets after the rank up. So it deals damage to one enemy, 150% chance to, to kill them, 1,200% uh, damage at MP level 1, and the defense reduction stays the same. Um, similar to kind of like Lancer Lee, he's all about <laughs> taking dudes down in one turn. Um, but that's really all that there is to him, <laughs> if you don't get him in one turn. <laughs> uh, there's not much else you can do. I don't think his skills have 6, 6, and 5. Okay, so they have decent uh, cooldowns. Um, he has a decent way of surviving as well. The kind of bummer is that his second skill, I kind of don't like it when they do this to a unit. It's when they're... Their evade is also something that increases their stuff in some way. I mean, I guess star absorption isn't the greatest thing ever, and 15 crit stars, and maybe you can... It's negligible, I guess, but I don't know. Um, the fact that you have to kind of choose between evasion and the good <laughs> the good effect is something you do have to think about with him. Um, similar to Benny, I think he's kind of like... Actually, I don't know. I think he might be technically better in some ways. But in my mind, they're kind of the same, where they're very much like, when you have them set up for a very specific unit, um, they absolutely destroy it. Um, the one thing that I will give against Lee is that he is insta-death, and I hate insta-death units. Uh, especially ones with arc, arc cards on them, the, they end up uh, doing this thing where their insta-kill doesn't give them MP charging. So even though his, I think his move is only one hit, it's one hit, so it doesn't even matter. Never mind. Um, I was going to say, if it was multiple hits, maybe it'd be a different story, but it's not. It's only one hit, so who cares? Um, I don't know. There you go. There's Old Man Lee. I don't have a lot of experience with him. I don't see a lot of people using him. I don't see a lot of people saying he's crazy good, but I also don't see a lot of people saying he's crazy bad. I think he's just kind of on the road good for what you need if you need him. Um, the much better assassin is coming later this year, 2021, which is Kama. Um, so it's something to kind of remember if you're someone who's like, I only need one single target assassin in my life, uh, then Kama's coming later this year. So something to think about. Okay, those are the two five-star units. Now let's finally get into what is actually coming for the 2021 campaign. <laughs> now I think everything here is already mentioned. Okay, so here's some more. Um... Here's the C that they mention. It increases quick card effectiveness for 8% 8 8 for yourself. It's not the greatest, but it's it's a New Year's C, so it's for collection. Um, the Mystic Coat Splendid New Year for a limited time will be available, so you can get one of these snazzy outfits. I don't think either one of them are anything special, but they are cool to look at. For, brief, uh, for a brief while, there will be a double chance of super and great success for Servant and CE enhancements. So if you held on to your EXP, good for you. Um... Double rewards from Start Dash login bonus, limited time. I think Start Dash is only for new masters, but if you're new to the game, I believe this is what you get. Yeah, to help new masters during the new year. So on day one, you get some two sync warrants, 4,000 grand uh, friend, friend points, some bla uh, Blaze of Wisdoms, four star, two of them, and Golden Fruit. Day two, it's four, uh, four quartz, 4,000 friend points. Same. I think the only thing that changes is the quartz. So on day two, you get four quartz. Day three, you get six quarts. Day four, it's 10 quarts. Day five is 14 quarts. Day six is 20 quarts. I don't think this is... Day seven is 40 quarts. Or is this is all together? There's no way that they're giving you um, that many quarts. That seems an insane amount of quarts. Um, log in for maximum 14 days of during this. What if 104 quarts summons? Jesus Christ. That's a lot for starting people, actually. Uh, and then after the 40 quarts, it's 6, 6, 6, 6 for the rest of the remaining. And then on day 14, you get 60 quarts. So... <sighs> Damn, I wish I had this. <laughs> Why aren't we getting this? I hate that we don't get start dash. Whatever. Whatever. 
Um, if you're starting to do the game, that's a decent amount of, I think that's around four summons overall. Uh, and you get summon tickets, so you get 40, so. Yeah, 192 sync quartz overall worth 64 sync quartz summons. So that's, yeah. So that's that would be 100 summons altogether. Um, 104. Man. <sighs> Limited time items added to the exchange mana prisms. So we'll get, this happens every year. Um, we can get a grab bag. Uh, the grab bag features a Lantern of Caldea, which is the Lantoria... Uh, uh, CEXP card, um, CEXP for Boar King. Wait, oh, the Lantern of Caldea is this thing right here. That's what they're calling it. I was, it's the thing that increases your bond from 10 to 11. Um, 10,000 QP and 10,000 friend points, and it only costs one mana prism, so you should 21 mana prism. You should absolutely buy it, but also along with that, we get the basic stuff. Um, you can get 10 summon tickets from it. Um, which is the main thing everyone else is going to get. If you want some Craft Essence EXP for Boar King, it's right there. A Click Code Remover, Arts Code Opener, and Buster Code Opener. Uh, code Remover, stuff like that. Um, and Sets of Blaze, uh, the EXP, you can get whatever. Yeah, it does it every time. Um, for Rare Man of Man Prism Shop is also going to be adding stuff. The Lantern of Caldea will be there. Um... Code Remover, Crystallized Lore, uh, Golden Foe, two of them and friend points, 20,000. Um, new items permanent to be added for Ikorosin? I forgot what that's called. Oh, what? oh, this is the Craft Essence. Okay. Um, increase MP gauge by 1% each turn. Okay. Limited time returning master login bonus. I already mentioned this. So, okay. That's not it. This is the final thing. This is the piece of resistance that we're going to be talking about. There will be two other banners coming. One is a limited time Saint Quartz Summon where you can get uh, Gilgamesh. Um, it will be on daily rotation. Gilgamesh, Gathach, Skahawk, my bad. Summer Nero, uh, Gene Alter, um, Painted, uh, Perverted Painter, Cleo, Sigurd. They'll be there if you want to get them. Um, but the most important one is, of course, the <laughs> Sankport's Guaranteed SSR Limited Banner. Um, it requires 15 paid ports, so you absolutely have to... There's no way to use... If you're free to play, you can't do this. Um, oh boy, but is it usually worth it? Um, it's very hard to get an SSR, so... And this is a pretty good offering of units. So all the units in this specific SSR are limited units. So that means you can't get any unit that is um, in the main gacha pool. So it takes out a lot of actual other units. And it's usually when they do GSSR, it's either these weird grab bags of units or they let you pick from a selection of them. Um, for this one, it's going to be between these 43 <laughs> limited time five-star servants. So it will be between... Um, Oh, they're up here, so let's go down them here. For Saber, we got Arthur Pendragon, Prototype, Miyamoto Musashi, Nero, Cla Nero Bride, Okita Soju, Ryoki Shiki, Sigurd. For Archer, we have Artoria Pendragon, uh, the Archer of Shinjuku. Okay, you don't mention his name here, fine, whatever. Gilgamesh, Ishtar, Jean the Ark, uh, Lancer, Breen Hild, Ish Erish Gargle, I can't pronounce her name, Skahawk, I can't pronounce her name, Tamamo no Mei. Um, that's it for the Lancers. Okay, the, the Tama no Mei is the... <laughs> Tama no Mei is the summer version, Summer Tamamo. And also the Summer Archer was Artoria Pendragon. Riders, we got Summer, summer Artoria Pendragon, uh, Iskandar, Ivan the Terrible. For casters, we have um, Ilya, Leonardo da Vinci, Merlin, uh, Summer Nero, Skahawk Scotty. Um, for Assassin, we have Cleopatra, uh, King Hassan, aka First Hassan, Mysterious Heroine X, Sebiramis, Shuten Doji. Almost done. Uh, Shuten Doji, uh, Berserker Hijikata Shizo, um, Minamoto no Raiko, uh, Mysterious Heroine X Alter, 
Sakukoto Kentoki, and that's to get for Berserkers. For Rulers, it is Amakasu Shiro, Quinn Shi Huang, and Sherlock Holmes. Avengers, we got Edmund Dantes and Jean the Arc Alter. Uh, for Alter Egos, we got Metalris, uh, Okita Soju Alter, and Szechuan Kiara. For Moon Cancer, we have BB, uh, Summer BB, and for Foreigner, we have Abigail Williams and Hokusai. Katsuhika Hokusai. These units right here. I'm going to make a video talking about these units uh, in depth later. Um, but the GSSR is actually pretty solid. You're more likely to get a very good unit as opposed to a bad one. Um, I would say the scales are more tipped in the favor of good over bad, but some of the bad ones on here are real bad in a way that's like, ugh. Like for her, <laughs> and she kind of went, oh no, no, he's not on here. Hijikata is really bad. <laughs> Hijikata is maybe, <laughs> if I'm being 100% honest, I think Hijikata might actually be the worst unit on this man. <laughs> Please freaking on it. Um, I have him MP2 if you're wondering, which is why I'm like, uh. Out of all the damn five stars I could get MP2, why you? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's going to be everything coming for New Year's, I think. Uh, pretty good comprehensive things of things coming anyway. Oh boy, I'm tired. That's it for me, everyone. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to hit that like button. Subscribe to me if you want some more. Once again, comment, tell me how you're feeling about New Year's. Um, get ready to get Lost Belt 3 in on in. <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next video. You guys have a good day. I'm gonna go to bed. Bye-bye.